హలో వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు అనదర్ సెషన్ ఆఫ్ అకాడమీ రైటింగ్ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ బ్యాక్ టు యూనిట్ త్రీ విచ్ డీల్స్ విత్ ద ప్రాసెస్ ఆఫ్ రైటింగ్ సో లెట్ సీ వాట్ ఆర్ ద ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ దట్ ఆర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్ ద ప్రాసెస్ ఆఫ్ రైటింగ్ the most delineating features of academic writing can be described in three words delineating means here the most important so the most important features of academic writing are formal objective and technical let us see in detail what these three words really mean formal Uh, it means that primarily an academic writing or academic work is written in a formal language so the language used in academic writing is definitely formal it is not informal we use standard words or formal uh, language second is objective it is objective or impersonal in tone and uses language to present views without personal bias that means in our academic writing we should be uh, as objective as possible that means we are writing impartially we don't involve our personal views in this uh, matter maybe we will have our views but we don't explicitly uh, mention that as far as possible we try to hold back our personal views only then we can be objective the third term is uh, technical because it is organized in a set pattern so we have got a format here uh, which we have to follow it uses technical terms and expressions and follows a style prescribed for the discipline so there are styles prescribed for this type of writing uh, we have got uh, two three types of uh, or t- styles of writing we have already seen so we need to follow uh, any one of those styles academic style that's the meaning of technical so before we go into the uh, writing proper there are certain things we need to ask ourselves these questions are who is writing and why so we need to ask the person the who, who is writing that and uh, why what is the purpose the intention of writing this particular uh, matter the educational level of the audience their predispositions on the topic their age ethnic identity and gender may also influence your writing style and content so your audience audience here means the readers Uh, the people who you are going to present the matter that is the audience so we should take into consideration their educational level uh, their cultural background uh, their gender uh, predisposition uh, disposition here means attitude what is their attitude towards this particular issue that you are going to present before them so all these are matters you need to consider before you embark on writing properly next steps in planning an essay what are the steps when you are planning to write this essay here essay means academic writing actually an academic essay is typically structured in three steps of paragraphs an introductory paragraph uh, then a minimum of three body paragraph and a concluding paragraph that is the structure which we will see later now we are going to the three major process processes preceding the submission of an academic assignment the three major processes are pre writing writing and uh, revising we'll see one by one so these three processes are pre writing writing and revising which again we'll see in three 
each of these processes involves certain steps to be followed uh, they are decide on what you want to study a study means to investigate or to uh, research so first of all you should have a topic what is that you are going to uh, deal with so the first step involves choosing a subject find out an aspect or area within the subject to focus and narrow down to formulate your topic so here you cannot take a vast subject or a general subject you need to uh, narrow down to a particular uh, issue of that topic for example you cannot uh, take the topic like uh, climate change that's a very vast uh, area so you can take one factor maybe like the role of cyclones in determining uh, determining the uh, weather so you need to narrow down your scope of uh, study understand the purpose and audience of your proposed work so that we have already seen you should know who we are going to deal with uh, who is going to uh, read your writing second step is collect information or expert sources so it is not enough that we give our opinions on a particular issue we also need to support uh, our arguments uh, with sources or uh, uh, external sources the second step is to identify the sources of information take down notes and prepare a working bibliography or list of works to be consulted or quoted so you are going to have an extensive study on this particular topic so definitely you will have to refer lots of books so that list of books is known as uh, bibliography and definitely when or you are taking their opinions you need to uh, quote them that is uh, citing them third step is <coughs> prepare a framework or structure to work on your framework means a kind of sketch like a skeleton broad outline you need to have so third steps uh, comprises finalizing the basic premises premises means arguments or statements key points the organizational pattern of the work and grouping of points for paragraphs so these are the things you should do uh, before we start the writing properly make a sketch broad outline and how you are going to arrange uh, the points um, or group them together and how the overall organization of your writing has to be uh, pre planned fourth step is start writing so once you have uh, all the points Uh, in a sketch or outline then <coughs> you are trying to uh, develop those points that's a real start uh, writing drafting begins as a fourth step here preparing the first draft going through the draft to ensure there are no structural and thematic inconsist- inconsistencies so uh, you start writing and then once you complete your writing definitely you have to go back to your writing and uh, do the editing uh, and uh, definitely revising where all changes are required you need to revise it so editing and revising is definitely another step very important step maybe we can say that is the last step before submitting the uh, writing so while editing and revising the things you need to mind uh, or not are language errors uh, like grammatical mistakes then use of taboo words taboo means forbidden maybe like bad language or indecent language then informal uh, words uh, should be avoided or discriminatory words or maybe uh, gender biased those kind of words 
should be avoided and expressions so these kinds of words and expressions are to be checked as a part of uh, editing so these are some of the areas you need to concentrate while editing and next we have the final draft which we are going to uh, present after editing revising everything you make the final uh, draft without any uh, mistakes in that it is always better to keep a checklist to verify if anything important is left out before submitting so have a checklist according to the checklist you uh, go through that final uh, draft before submitting the uh, writing next we are going to see something about the audience audience analysis in academic writing so here audience means uh, the readers definitely <coughs> so audience analysis is an important prerequisite for effective communication so whenever you communicate something you should know who you are interacting with so depending on the level of your audience you will have to change your language change your expressions your tone and all that same way in writing also once you know the audience you will have to uh, change your expressions or uh, your tone uh, everything accordingly so academic writing is not different in this respect because it is also basically a communication before venturing into an academic writing assignment you need to have a clear idea about your audience so when you are uh, writing to a group of students or you suppose your audience is students then definitely your writing has to uh, turn accordingly <coughs> so that it will suit the audience so there are few questions you need to ask with regard to audience like who am i writing for what do i expect my readers to know about my topic then what do i want my readers to think about my topic so what impression you would like to give to your audience or what is the response you expect from them and what do my readers know about my topic that is uh, how much do they know about this topic only then you can write effectively next we are going to see about voice in an academic work what is the meaning of voice there is a widespread belief that academic writers should maintain objectivity in their approaches and pers- perspectives but what rings at the core of your work is your own distinct voice so uh, it is desirable that we all maintain objectivity as far as possible definitely uh, as a writer you will be always looking from your point of view uh, you cannot escape that but you should not show that in your writing that uh, you are actually presenting your views so is a rather tricky situation here uh, even when you are presenting your own views you should not appear that they are your views it should appear as uh, facts or general truths so that nobody can question your uh, objectivity that is if you are writing a persuasive piece there is a consistent attempt throughout your work to convince the reader that your views are worth considering so sometimes when you are writing a persuasive piece where you want to convince people about certain ideas definitely uh, there will be that subjectivity coming in still you normally do not use such expressions as i think in my opinion and i found out that so this kind of expression should be avoided because uh, they clearly show that 
they are your personal views and not uh, very objective in order to make your writings more inclusive it is better to write without reinforcing your stake in the work that means uh, you should uh, be detached uh, that means you should not show that you are actually playing a role in this that you are trying to be neutral that's the meaning of um uh, trying to be inclusive so it is always better to sound neutral whatever is the voice in the text one thing is crucial your voice in academic assignments should sound educated or well informed sophisticated and rational so whenever you are writing something there should be kind of authority the people who read should realize that as yes, this person has some real basic understanding of what he is he or she is writing this way uh, you should sound educated and well informed and also rational logical you cannot be irrational in your writing and convey your ideas more directly and clearly so whatever you want to convey uh, you should convey directly and clearly without Uh, any ambiguity or lack of clarity in your writing now we go to the structure of an academic essay <coughs> the major parts of an essay include introductory paragraph body paragraph and concluding paragraph so these are the three main uh, parts of a uh, an essay so we have got the introductory paragraph then body paragraph there can be many but introductory paragraph and concluding paragraph only one each definitely now let's see how they are uh, structured the introductory paragraph is the first paragraph of your essay introduction aims at grabbing the attention of your reader and makes a few statements on background the main ideas and outline of your essay so in the introductory paragraph you are going to uh, get the attention catch the attention of your readers and uh, you are making a uh, few statements on the background of your writing and the main ideas that you would like to share and also the outline of your <coughs> essay broad outline so these are the things you should include in the introductory paragraph next one is the body paragraph So it is the main paragraph of an essay. Each paragraph in an essay works like a link in a chain, contributing to the wholeness of the work. However, paragraphs are to be written in such a way as to make them stand independent of the totality of the essay. So the body paragraph is the main paragraph, and each paragraph should be like a link, one connecting the other. Uh, they should not stand apart independently no uh, one paragraph actually flows from another paragraph there should be a uh, logical flow throughout the uh, whole writing so one paragraph should be uh, closely related to the other there should be a kind of logical sequence next we go to the concluding paragraph definitely it is the last paragraph you are expected to restate your thesis statement given in the introduction so you are going back to the thesis statement that is the main topic then summarize the points uh, so a concluding paragraph uh, has to summarize all the points that you are given through which you explained your thesis statement in the body paragraph and finish your essay with a concluding remark so here you are concluding uh, by restating your thesis statement and also trying to sum up the whole thing that is the function of a concluding paragraph then there are three types of sentences which you need to use in all the paragraphs they are topic sentence substantiation conclusion or transition so these are the three types of 
sentences we need to use in every paragraph so each sentence in a paragraph has a function let us see that first topic sentence it expresses the main idea of each paragraph that means the topic sentence is the first sentence uh, of that paragraph which is again which is stating the main idea of that particular paragraph it contains the focus of the paragraph and tells readers what the paragraph is going to be about so it is the main sentence of that particular uh, paragraph and what follows is that kind of explanation although the topic sentence can be located anywhere in a paragraph in academic essays it is usually located at the beginning of each paragraph so the topic sentence uh, mostly it will be found uh, in the beginning of the paragraph next is substantiation so what do we mean by substantiation <coughs> successful academic writing requires claims and arguments to be substantiated with evidence from research or other authoritative sources so it is very easy for us to make statements or uh, make uh, what do you call uh, arguments but you need to support your arguments with other facts or which you brought out from other uh, authority sources or from other authors or writers so only then your uh, argument will stand without that uh, it will be like you know uh, in the air your, your arguments cannot stand in the air without the support this practice goes to the heart of academic writing because it reflects the objectivity of your writing so substantiation means you are trying to give support to your argument by giving facts maybe by quoting from other books and all that so you know hard facts uh, and uh, statements of other research uh, sources only then your uh, argument can stand third one is concluding sentence so the concluding sentence in the paragraph summarizes the points that you have made so always concluding means summarizing so that sentence will give the summary of that particular paragraph it should tie the whole paragraph together without simply rephrasing the topic sentence so this concluding sentence has to uh, keep the uh, rest of the sentences linking them at the end of your concluding paragraph your concluding sentence should wrap up your entire argument and provide guidance to your readers about what to do with the information you have given them <coughs> so after concluding a paragraph the concluding sentence also can give uh, some guidelines to your readers what uh, they can do further with the information that you have provided now we are going back to uh, the steps in planning an essay the three main steps they are pre writing writing and revising first we go to pre writing pre writing activities are the preliminary steps before starting your writing properly <coughs> so before writing what are the things you need to do there's a preliminary steps understanding the question or topic purpose and audience so before starting to write you should know the uh, topic thoroughly what you are going to write and why you are writing it and also for whom you are writing who are the audience pre writing techniques like brainstorming clustering or mind mapping etc are used to list and organize your ideas so you will see what is brainstorming uh, later in detail cluster means again grouping together that means words or ideas related to one particular uh, point you can group them together 
and mind mapping is also very important if your instructor has given you a question convert the question into a topic and if the topic is given by your instructor convert the topic into a question so you are supposed to uh, inverse uh, if if there is a question given you you are supposed to make it a statement or a topic and if a topic is given then you have to convert it into uh, a question if only a keyword is given you are required to frame topic as well as the question so only a word is given keyword then you are supposed to make a statement and also a question from that main steps in planning an essay <coughs> first identify the sources and gather relevant materials so when you are going to write an essay you need to have a lot of uh, sources maybe articles books uh, maybe the uh, net blogs whatever prepare an outline decide the logical ordering of ideas cluster ideas for paragraphs so before writing you have to make a broad outline and then try to order the ideas properly and group the ideas together and all that for a particular paragraph then identify the thesis statement so thesis statement is very very important and we will see more about thesis statement later next we come to writing frame the thesis statement and list the main points so thesis statement is the backbone of your uh, writing and from the statement you have to make further uh, main points then draft the introductory paragraph there is the first paragraph which includes the uh, thesis statement then draft each body paragraph with supporting points substantiation and transition so after the introductory paragraph you go to the uh, body paragraph uh, it can be more than 1 3 4 or 5 depending on your need then draft the concluding paragraph so you have three types of paragraph starting from introductory paragraph going to the body paragraphs and coming to the concluding paragraph then coming to revising so once your uh, drafting is complete you have to go back to your draft and then start editing and revising your essay here you have to check for inconsistencies or uh, is there any contradiction in your writing your tone use of taboo words uh, forbidden words and expressions then grammar checking spelling punctuation and referencing referencing means Uh, quoting from other uh, books so these are some other uh, points you need to check while revising now we come back to brainstorming what is the importance of brainstorming so it is a group activity conducted <coughs> at the beginning of a project to generate ideas so usually we find in some organizations or companies and all that they use this techniques to get or to collect ideas from uh, the employees of the people in the company in business and organizational context brainstorming is used as a method to generate innovative ideas on an area of interest and sometimes to find leads to address problems challenges or conflicts so when whenever there is a problem uh, facing a company or uh, any organization uh, they call all the stakeholders uh, together and then they present this issue before them and then they'll ask okay i want your feedback give me your ideas so that's how you get uh, ideas from the people and this process is called the uh, brainstorming brainstorming can be of great use as a pre-writing technique so you can call your friends or people involved in this writing 
then i can ask them ideas so whatever ideas you get from them you can write them down so it's a very useful pre writing technique before you start writing it is essential for you to gather ideas and get into the heart of your subject so before starting the writing proper you need to collect all the facts all the ideas related to your topic then writing a thesis statement so thesis statement is the backbone of an essay it holds together the different parts of the essay it allows the reader to know what the essay is about so actually thesis statement is the most important statement because it tells the reader what you are writing about uh, it is a backbone of your essay you can derive thesis statement by asking yourself questions about the key aspect of your topic so how to get this or uh, how to reach the thesis statement it is by asking questions to yourself about the topic you are writing the ideal length of a thesis statement is one or two sentences <coughs> so the thesis statement should not be very long it has to be very precise and it has to be very clear the thesis statement reveals the standpoint of the writer so it tells what is your position what uh, position you take on that particular issue your thesis statement needs to be expressive of the tone of your essay so it uh, gives the reader the tone of your uh, your essay or what is the attitude that you have you may start writing the first draft of your paper with a working thesis it is a rough draft of a thesis statement so you before you come to the proper thesis statement first you start with a working thesis which may change later because it is only a uh, rough draft which can be refined or modified at a later stage then three types of paragraph in academic essay we have already seen that that is introductory paragraph body paragraph and concluding paragraphs we are going to see them in detail first introductory paragraph this is the first paragraph of the essay body paragraph is the main paragraph of an essay so the introductory paragraph Uh, the functions it invites attention of the reader so the first paragraph is the introductory paragraph and through that you are trying to grab the attention of the uh, reader it gives vital background information so the introductory paragraph also gives you uh, or gives the reader some background information it presents the thesis statement which we have already seen then it provides outline statements now we come to body paragraph they give a complete idea with necessary explanations illustrations quotations and other forms of substantiation so it is in the body paragraph you are trying to give support to your uh, statements through explanation illustration and also quotations from uh, other sources the purpose is to present one idea so the body paragraph has to give only one idea one paragraph should have only one idea it should not have too many ideas in a particular paragraph <coughs> five to 10 sentences uh, can be included in a paragraph not more than that each paragraph elaborates the main idea or the topic so every paragraph should contain one idea and then other supporting uh, statements then transition words or discourse markers uh, to be used to indicate change or transition then each sentence in a paragraph has a function like topic sentence substantiation uh, conclusion or transition
Next, concluding paragraph. It is the last paragraph of an essay. You are expected to restate your thesis statement given in the introduction. Summarize the points through which you explained your thesis statement in the body paragraph and finish your essay with a concluding remark. So, the concluding paragraph you will find the uh, summarizing of the whole points and then again the thesis statement is given there. And then you complete your essay with a concluding remark. So, this paragraph can open with a transition word or phrase like to conclude, to sum up, etc. It returns to the main point restating or rephrasing the thesis statement. We have already seen that. Then gives a broad concluding statement to indicate your verdict on the issue. So, you can give a kind of uh, uh, judgment or your conclusion about uh, the issue that you are dealing with. So, there can be a concluding statement. Or scope for further studies. If you think that uh, uh, this is not uh, really an inclusive, uh, there is still a scope for further studies, you can mention that. Or recommendations for uh, further study. So, with that we come to the end of uh, uh, the process of writing. Thank you and have a great day.